Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the block. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Hi, all you Road to Growth listeners. Uh, today, we have a fun one. So as some of you guys know, we do this live uh, through YouTube, LinkedIn, everything like that. And then the audio comes out a couple of weeks later. So if you were waiting for the, the live YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and we had a little technical difficulty, that's what happens when you have international business. Everything's closer, yet time zones can change a little bit, but we have it. We made it happen, Simona. I'm excited for this. Uh, no, really, you are so nice. Thanks a lot for creating that great story. <laughs> uh, so, Simona, and we talked about it before we got on mic. Her last name, Spilak. It, I, I'm gonna, I, I say Spilak, but she says it more eloquently. Why don't you give the full name, Simona? Yeah, my name is Simona Spilak. That's the correct pronunciation, but it's hard really to say it. So you've done perfect. With my well, name, I, name. With, with all my like my my given name is Vicente Enriquez and I mm -hmm. can't roll my R's I'm half Mexican and so when I have people on there like uh, and not for you but for other people and I'm I'm trying to roll my R's I'm like oh my gosh it shows mm -hmm. how how whitewashed I am how American I am so. absolutely you know it's easier for me because Italy is close to Vicenza or Vicenza <laughs> <laughs> everything goes well so so you're a you're a executive executive coach and i've had a lot of coaches on here and the question I, I i've been asking more often when i get coaches on here what what do you think separates you from other coaches mm, you know if i would say that i have a corporate background most probably everybody in executive coaching world has but i would say that my difference is being really like not only self-confident, but offering the space which is really highly confidential and where people really can share things which they in majority can't share with the rest of the world, either their spouses, colleagues, or other executive board members. And it's really about the confidentiality mm -hmm. and non-judgmental space where you or where leaders, executives can come to, even though that they know that they can talk to everybody, but they feel alone in that crowd. And I am that second set of objective eyes where they can really go through different decisions, different situations which they might be facing and just come to the decisions and actions which they can align with their values. And that's that space working with me as an executive coach. Well, and, and I think something too, I mean, you have a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of coaches out there, right? And looking at your background, right, where you you went to university, you got two degrees, uh, you were in corporate world for 20 some years, uh, and then you started basically in this platform. You'll see some kind of coaches that are in their early 20s or coaches that maybe are just coaches in different sectors. It seems like you bring a lot of, of uh, firsthand knowledge to mm -hmm. this. No, I'm really respectful, respectful towards everybody because I believe that every single coach, every single consultant, mentor, or a podcast has his own client or somebody whom they either can reach out or who wants to work with them and listen to. And that's my true opinion. And that's also, you know, if you consider the market, either of coaching or whatsoever industry, and we are looking at it, then my opinion is that, you know, there is a natural selection. First of all, it starts with our decision, strategic decision. What coach do we want to be? What do we stand for? What, uh, what results can we get for our clients? And then the second part is about how good we really are with what we do and how much do we truly love it. Because you can't do something like coach on a long-term, continuous base, that top, top, high-level quality if you not, do not truly do it with all of your heart and I would say also all of our being. And that's my motto. Just do what you love, what you are passionate for, uh, for and what you can be really paid for it and good paid for it. Then that's the formula for something that we really enjoy for a long time. And, and I think you bring up a good point too, right? Where a lot of, I mean, majority of people, unless, and there's always gonna be someone that's probably gonna be a little bit higher than you knows a little bit more than you. So yeah. even if maybe you're, you're a newer coach, you're probably in a point 
that's farther along than someone else or the people you're coaching. And so it's easier probably to, to learn from someone that's maybe a little bit farther up than someone that's drastically on top of the hill. Like there was a, a saying, at least in real estate, that it's hard to transition from a couple deals to about a medium sized amount of deals. And then from a medium sized me deals, then you go to the next one. So maybe you just need that coach to get you from there. And then you get the mm -hmm. higher, coach, the better coach and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I would, you know, there are different, uh, diff various layers to, yeah. uh, to it either if you're going for a coach as a client or if you uh, are playing on the market as a coach but I would say it really has to do with the decision as a coach what's our niche what's our who are our clients and whom do we really would love to work with that's the key decision and then on the other hand as we look at our clients you know leaders and executives or business leaders are a different stage of development Mm, development of their profession, of course, or career. And the second of all, we are also different. We are also unique as humans. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not a coach for everybody and not everybody uh, is a client for me because there has to be not only a chemistry and a fit of experiences or a methodology which I'm offering or my credentials which I have, experience and language which I speak. There is that really important part of chemistry which leads to trust. And so it's about a need which we have and a relationship, truly trustful relationship we can build, build with another. Well, so walk us through um, kind of where you came from. I mean, we talked a little a little about your uh, your background, mm. but how did you get, I know this is a deep question, how did you get from there to here? Where'd you, where'd you grow up kind of <laughs> university? Well, from there to here, it's a lot of persistence, I would say, a lot of courage and a lot of belief in myself and believe that uh, out there, there is business for me and that there are people who would love and enjoy to work with me. So that's the difference in short. But in general, yeah, I do come from a very small village here in Slovenia. Slovenia is a European country. We have only 2 million of inhabitants, so really, really, really small. And now if we think about the business, really, um, the market is cluttered. And if an entrepreneur or a business leader or a company wants to grow the business, we all think about going out, going international and really growing the business outside of uh, the uh, our borders. So it's going international, it's quite a normal decision for everybody. Yeah, so uh, starting small, coming from that small part of Slovenia, really what I remember that my starting point was that I was really kind of a introverted, isolated child and nobody could tell that today, but <laughs> that period of that childhood really gave me an excellent opportunity to dive deep into the books and TVs and everything what I was uh, doing alone and really enjoying that time. It was kind of a me time. And this offered me an opportunity to, to really have that logical, analytical approach towards the business. And that's why I enjoyed being business developer in pharma, where I spent almost like 20 years developing businesses for over-the-counter trucks in Central and Eastern Europe for big giants like GlaxoSmithKline and Sanofi in pharma world. And it, that analytical approach and really uh, taking time to think about things, uh, plan and then reflect, gave me then the opportunity to uh, transition from the corporate career to become an executive search expert and executive coach. So that's kind of my story. <laughs> now, what is that? Can you remember the moment when you wanted to be um, an executive coach, build your business? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that moment when you're in the corporate world? Was it instant? Mm -hmm. Was it something that came to you younger? I mean, where did that come from? You know what? I always desired from my high school on to work in corporate. So that was my dream. And I just built my career after the university and started to work in global for global international companies. And I never, ever thought that I will become an entrepreneur whatsoever executive coach. So the interesting thing is that it happened to me somewhere end of 2015, end of 2016. And I remember correctly, we went through... In Sanofi at that time, we went through three different organizational and two different strategic restructurings and reorganizations. And the situation really was that I kind of felt, you know what? I feel like I'm in that golden cage. 
where you have everything, where you achieved what you were striving for, where there was kind of a ceiling there. What else can I do? Where else to go? And of course, as we all do, I initially started to search and look around for other corporate jobs. But then I, with one, with a discussion with one of my uh, at that time coaches, I realized that actually I'm at the stage where I gained so much experience and I have so much knowledge, which I would really love to share. And then kind of a natural idea was, okay, I could become a consultant. And uh, here the idea, idea started that I really opened my brick and mortar business, which is still my executive search agency where I help international clients and big companies uh, in the search for top leaders or top executives positions or leadership positions in their organizations. And it was kind of smooth transitions because I used all the experience from corporate, knowing different functions, different segments, several markets, and translated that into the search for top candidates, where I spoke the language, I knew the business, I knew the organization. And then with time, I just decided I would like to enrich my services. And the natural step again was executive coaching, where I then done my uh, coaching certification with Ericsson International Coaching and done two licenses for personality and prof uh, professional profiling, which is very, very often used for management audits and so on. So, yeah, for me, it was kind of a natural step. It wasn't, no, no, yeah. nothing was shocking. Okay, so the are you talking about a year before you open the brick and mortar two years six months what no, are the timelines kind of a nine to twelve months something okay. like that yeah because you know i'm not a patient person was probably that. <laughs> so you, you had the idea so you had the idea of of doing it nine to twelve months what are the steps you remember the steps that you started to do to look into it see if it's because i mean it's a big jump you're you're mm -hmm. in the corporate world you're getting that steady paycheck for 20 some years yeah. And now transitioning to be your own boss, brick and mortar, that's taking a lot of risk on there. So mm -hmm. some people, they'll have the thought and they just won't transition. Mm -hmm. Other people, it takes them a while. They're very analytical about it. It's like, okay, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. What does mm -hmm. that look like for you? For me, I'm all about having a good plan. Yeah. But before that, I have to see and understand the opportunity. As I understand the opportunity, then it's kind of easy to make the plan because that's the corporate mindset which we develop. But on the other hand, I would say that, you know, people don't stumble or struggle with the decision or how to approach it due to having a lack of strategic knowledge or business knowledge. Usually where we st uh, stumble on is our mindset and all those limiting beliefs. Can I do it? I'm not good enough. Where, who, who will buy me? Who will pay me? And so that, that's usually the circle, like a vicious circle, not trusting ourselves. So I went through that as well. So this kind of happened to me as I already had my agency like 14, 16 months after it. I clearly remember it. But for me, starting my brick and mortar was actually about identifying the opportunity. And my personal recommendation to everybody is if you want to start your own business do have like identified a few projects already or at least one one big client you can start to work with because otherwise there is a span of time or a certain time needed to um, build awareness about the market and build the credibility of your of you being an expert or a business owner on some on a certain field so in general uh, i got the opportunity identified with to, and i started to work with one big company i started with management audit and then i believe with 10 projects of executive search but i had it slightly before i opened my agency so i knew already that there is business existing and that creates a huge safety for or I created it for me as an entrepreneur, as a business leader. And it wasn't only a safety in the sense of financials, but as well sense of having the confidence that I can do it as well as an entrepreneur. And that was the mindset which helped me a lot starting my business and growing it really fast. So you said 14 months into starting your business, mm -hmm. you had a little bit of a low moment. What, what happened there? What, what came about with that low moment? Mm -hmm. You know, it's I, now looking back, back as you asked me that question, it's kind of similar to the challenges which my clients have. 
You know, you are so extremely successful already and you know that you can do it and you can build it, but there is something which is like uh, stopping you to grow even faster or to go bigger or to do the next step. And I kind of felt isolated at that moment because it was um, a moment of shame. I, you know, I didn't want to share with somebody, you know, I have that challenge, how to grow further, how to go further. Am I really at the stage I do want, I want to be? Am I good as I think I am good and excellent. And at that time, um, I realized that it would be good to have a discussion with somebody who is not in my sphere of business and somebody who is completely independent. Yeah, I was, I was really, you won't believe it, but I was challenging my own uh, skills and competences, the quality of uh, services, which are always like top, top. That's my personal value. And yeah, at that moment, I just noticed, you know, I have to put it out of my head. And that's where that famous approach comes in. You know, if you say it loudly, it sounds completely different. And at the moment, as we are discussing our challenges or sharing them with somebody, often for me, it's not so much the expectation that I would love to get an advice. I just need that listening ear, somebody who is just asking me the right questions. So I can come up with solutions for myself because they are based on my personal experience and resources. And that's, that became the basis of my executive coaching then. So you're, you had a coach that allowed you or helped you get through that low moment because you were able to kind of converse and talk about mm -hmm. it and overcome it. Um, I mean, you've talked about coaching uh, a couple different times. So you've had a coach for yourself when you're in the corporate world, how long ago did you start having a coach? Uh, for me, if I look back now, it started with mentorship. I got my first business mentor in the second year of my uh, uh, career. And it was an excellent gentleman who was really like international. He traveled a lot with the family and he introduced me to that social part of our career, which then became a basis for me being a great uh, not only great networker, but I love networking. I love creating great relationships. And later on, I kind of noticed that life sent me people who were my business mentors and I saw incredible value and help in that. And later on, uh, after somehow eight years in my corporate, I got my first coach. When my first learning was that, you know, I should not be recruiting mini me's. So it's about diversity in the team. And it's about me being able like, to accept and work and uh, lead a variety of personalities and experts in my team. So that was a great learning. And then later on, it was just upgrading my leadership skills and working on my uh, expertise as well as a, as a business, um, business leader. And it really helped me later on as I started my own business that I always, always have a coach or a business mentor, usually both of them. And that's such a tremendous, not only support, but as well help. And I know that immediately as I set a challenge for myself, which I can't solve or, or I see a challenge, I can talk to somebody who will help me identify a different opportunity or just a solution sometimes for a challenge which I have. So it's, an, it's really based on the personal experience which provided me or helped me to build my business. So how do you, how do you find the right coach for you? When you're looking for your coaches and you've had coaches, mm -hmm. multiple coaches, how do you find the right coach, the right mentor? Is it word of mouth? Is it online? I mean, what, what avenues mm -hmm. did you do to find those coaches? Oh, you know, it's usually based on referral. Okay. So if somebody refers me, somebody... Um, Actually, one coach I found as I was uh, working on my coaching certification, of course, I had the experience. And I believe that majority of my corporate and executive clients are exactly like that. So they have to know each other, either listen to them somewhere or read about them and just then jump on a call just to get to know the person. Or they got a referral from somebody of either from the business world, the HR or their uh, or, or their business colleagues and it was exactly the same for me so but you know in general i don't mind i'm fine with online coach or with a uh, face-to-face coach it's fine for me for me what really is important and i believe that's for every single um, person is that i can 
sense in that moment that that person will be able to not only help me, but as well challenge me to get to the result which I desire. And that's a lot, it, it is a lot related with how somebody is really able to listen, to listen deeply and to ask the right questions at the right moment. And the question so deep that we as clients or my clients, they never forget the discussion which we had. And so, that's for me kind of a well, in, that, in that initial conversation then, you feel mm -hmm. like when you first talk to a coach, right? The coaches that you've had in the past, you can tell if this is going to be a good fit or not fit for you? I, I always do this so-called intake session, introduction session, where we can chat about different variety of things. It's not about coaching. It's just, just, for example, about me and you. What do you do? How do you feel? Where do you feel that your biggest challenges are? What would you like to create for yourself? Or what's stopping you to get there? And it's usually you know, just, just a conversation without any expectations. I am like that. I never set an expectation for myself that I would love to work with that person because it's about them and it's on them to decide if I am the right coach for them as well. So what I can do is really just relax and listen. And uh, it's a both way. It's a two way relationship anyway. And only in the situations as I sense that there might be somebody who is just coming for a dis uh, discussion and a great conversation and that they are, don't have the drive to really work on what they really dream of, then that's a case where I really like raise a red flag in my head and just remember it. Because if somebody is not willing to do the work and not, take, you know, not willing to take the action after two or three sessions, I already know that that's not leading somewhere. And then usually I'm very open about it. I put it on the table, discuss it, and then we see. How we can proceed so in majority it's about motivation and if and the person that? reaches out by itself it's easier if the company reaches out for me to be a coach for somebody of their employees or executives then the motivation might be a challenge what what about for yourself when you were looking at coaches mm -hmm. right was there something that was said or is it strictly a feeling that you knew that was the right person for you mm -hmm. no i'm usually going after having a sense that I will be able to trust that person because I know achievement will be on me. I will have to do the work. So it's about the trust. And I would say also uh, the feeling of non-judgmentalness that I can talk to somebody who does not have any intention to influence my decisions or to share whatsoever opinions which will guide my decision because coaches we coaches are not here because of that and those are the two things i'm looking for and i believe that that's something what i provide to my clients as well so giving the really trustful and non-judgmental space where you can put everything or bring everything to the table just put it there and then we'll see how we can go from there i, I love that um mm -hmm. Going back to the transition from uh, in corporate world to starting your own business, mm -hmm. I mean, something that I, a question that I've brought up more often now, do you think there's anything that company that you're previous with could have done to want you to stay with them and never open up your own um, brick and mortar and business? Um, I believe it. they could. For another, for example, with a, another more a senior or more international role, but I don't believe that it, this will last or I will last in corporate for more than additional three to four years maximum. I kind of sense, you know, as you get that feeling that, or no, as you get that feeling, I would love to try something more completely different. And I remember back in my childhood, I was like that every four years. I changed the environment and changed my school. I changed my friends. And it was exactly that feeling. I would love to change something in my life, to go to new spaces I never discovered and to see what else is out there for me, not only to achieve, but as well to learn. It was for me, it was more a learning curve than really a um, personal career growth. So talk, talking about every four years when you're younger, you want something new, new challenges. <laughs> and let's say five years from now, yeah. what is Simona going to be doing? Is she going to be, where's this company going to be? Where are you going to be? Hmm. 
My brick and mortar, I would love to hand over in five years my brick and mortar for somebody to lead it and as a managing partner or a director, really, because it's so well established already, so well known, and we have the credibility and the trust and loyal clients. And then with my executive coaching business, uh, which is becoming global, and I would really love to position it as uh, coaching where really people can come to think about ways how they can even be more successful or more powerful, more confident as they already are, even though they are already exceptionally successful. And I would really love to enjoy that space of uh, not only doing coaching and one-on-one, -on -one, which I truly enjoy, but as well being able to share my knowledge and experience with a wider uh, audiences. I love, I love anyway, con conferences and public speaking. And of course, there is a desire to write a book, but that's actually our 18 month goal. So. It's, it's a, a big jump from the introvert woman that we talked about <laughs> when it's all started right there. Big, a big jump. Well, it was a long path, you know, <laughs> five years of uh, having that me time. I believe it's a good ground for next 50, 60 years. <laughs> being accelerated <laughs> if if you could look back at that that young woman that just got out of college got her degree right i know jumping back mm -hmm. if you could give her any advice is there any advice you think you'd give her um uh, you know what i would say to her that she should keep that tremendous level of self-confidence which she got immediately as she exited university and started for her first job but you are not uh, framed by social norms or by expectations from the outside and our inner expectations but there you are just open to all the possibilities and uh I kind of a little bit kept it, lost it somewhere in between and got it back, really. Just trust in yourself and believe that everything is achievable if you respect your own desires and wishes and if you respect others. So it's not one of those only. It's both of them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a powerful thing, having the self-confidence uh, yeah. um, and not being afraid of what other people are going to think and... I mean, really yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we all, we are like that. We are humans and we always find that connection and we always find somebody who will have our back, even though that we have, for example, are searching for the help. And that's why so many different industries and so many different uh, services of mentorship, coaching or consulting are out there or just educating or going for the university as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, if someone's listening right now and, and they really appreciate what you've had to offer and want to find more about you or your company, what's the best avenue for them to, to reach out to you? Yeah, they can jump on LinkedIn, find my profile, Simona Spilak. <laughs> it's there. I really, I'm very often on LinkedIn. I love it. It's a corporate platform and it stayed with me. I started my Twitter account, which I would really love to develop in the future as well. And then there is my website. Uh, www.simonespilag.com so uh, cool. uh, so that uh, just reach out I really love having conversations with people and not only about their challenges but as well um, I'm you know I'm that firm believer that every single person who opens a zoom with me or enters my door in the office is a gift because I will learn something new because we are really so unique in who we are and what we do and what we bring with so you, you heard it here first. I mean, I'm going to have to put this on my advertising notes. Simona says that I'm a gift. So I want you to know that. <laughs> well, you are, you know. You, you <laughs> gave me such a great gift with the introduction to our interview, you know, <laughs> not mentioning that I <laughs> actually <laughs> missed our first date for the interview. So <laughs> absolutely. That, that was a learning how I will open sometimes in my <laughs> interviews and how I will introduce other guests in my interviews no problem well thank you simona for being here hopefully everyone listening got some some great nuggets um i mean having that focus having a mentor having a coach i mean it's, mm -hmm. it's so powerful i mean okay. like like simona said just having someone that will be able to listen to you take in the notes and mm -hmm. and let you self-realize where you need to go and where you, where you want to be so uh hopefully you got some great nuggets from there and reach out to simona if you have any questions any last words simona you want to throw out there 
Yeah, I just wanted to say what you just started. You know, if uh, me as a coach, I always believe and I truly believe in the fact that I have to develop and learn. And that's why I choose coaches and coachings and different trainings and learnings. And if I'm not investing in myself, why should somebody else or would somebody else invest in working with me? Because that's what it is about. It's about growth and learning. And that's the life path and finding really somebody and something to enjoy on that path <laughs> well thank you guys again for uh please subscribe please share and tell your friends have a great one everyone